Good day, good day. That music always makes me feel good, and I feel better today because the lady who actually produced, wrote, arranged, I may say it wrong, but she'll correct me later, that music is going to be here with us today. So I hope you're doing well, and welcome to another Tuesday with Tom, and I am Tom, of course. And so let me start off by talking a little bit about Hurricane Sally. You know, last week when we were here, we I talked to you and I told you that the tropical storm was on its way and, you know, we'd ride it out and sit through it. Well, 36 hours before it hit, it went from a tropical storm that was going to be 200 miles off to a Category 3 hurricane with 100 mile an hour winds that primarily hit in Pensacola and Gulf Shores. And Pensacola is about 40 miles from us. It was awesome. It dumped a lot of water on us. It sat offshore for like a day, day and a half, and it just dumped water and dumped water, 10 to 15 feet of water. After the hurricane, the streets were all blocked off. Many of the streets were blocked off, ones that were flooded. Cars were underwater. Boats floated off to who knows where. Um, in addition, that water got up so fast. And, and I can tell you, if it's possible, the water seems like it was angry. You know, I would describe it as being fierce. And so I want to thank all of you out there who checked on us. We got emails and texts and phone calls just to see if we were all right. We had no injuries. We did have a little bit. We had some damages uh, to our roof. Uh, they're coming out to check on it. We had some damage to our dock, and that thing just destroyed my boat. But we're fine. And so everything else can be replaced. But you know, when you're sitting in the dark and, and the power went out about 1030 that morning, came back on about two the next morning. But when you're sitting in the dark and you're wondering what's happening outside, because with all the noise and the banging going on and you're hearing limbs crack and you're hitting things hit against the house, it's really comforting to know that someone is at least thinking about you and that someone cares. So thank you all again for all the calls and the texts and, and, and emails to check on us. I would like to do a shout out to Pam Brazil Malone. Pam sent in a comment last week. Pam and I did not get to acknowledge it. I'm sorry about that, but I'm certainly acknowledging you today. And I hope you're enjoying the book and I look forward to hearing what you think about it after you finish. Today, we're going to do a little sports, uh, a little uh, politics. So let me introduce my two roundtable guests, Barbara Wallace Edwards and Michael Walker. Uh, Barbara Wallace Edwards is retired from Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And uh, Barbara is always on the go somewhere. Barbara, I see you there now. Welcome. Good morning, uh, Tom. Thank uh, you. Where are you today? Are you in Birmingham or are you in, in Alaska somewhere? I'm actually in Birmingham today again. Uh, it's two weeks in a row now. That's I, record, I, I think. I, I see. I see. <laughs> Hurricane Sally sort of stopped my travels too. I, I wasn't going moving around too far. I kind of planned to come down south, but changed my mind. So I'm, well, I'm here in Birmingham. Well, with the pandemic and the hurricane, it's been it's been something. And I tell you, there's another system out there now in the Gulf down around Miami that we watch. And every morning, once we start hurricane season, I go on the hurricane app and uh, just look at see where they all are in the Atlantic Ocean uh, yes. so that we can plan whatever we need to plan and do. But um, we've been uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Hurricane. Uh, Sally, the word is down here was Ivan's little sister, Hurricane Ivan, which was a monster in itself. Yes. It was 15 years to the date when it when Sally showed up. So, wow. um, but you know, yeah, people for the, who, for the, for the first time ever, I hear they may run out of, of the, the English alphabets for names of hurricanes this year. They're actually yeah. considering using Greek names now, Greek letters. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty bad. Well, people who live uh, near the water are resilient. And um, the next day, everybody just gathered and assessed what, they, what had happened to their particular property or what have you, and just started to clean up. And uh, 
started the repairs. And so um, hopefully, I mean, you know, we were all blessed that nobody was hurt. And Thank so God. We'll go forward. So yes. uh, let's get Michael on here. And then, well, let me, Barbara, so what's happening in your world today? And well, we can thank bring you, Tom. Michael on. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I'm still reeling from the, the death of Supreme Court Justice uh, Ginsburg. I mean, that, that she was such a phenomenal woman. And um, it is really a great loss to our justice system to, to lose her. So um, she will be the first one, become the first woman to actually in history to lie in state at the U.S. Capitol. So that's, that says a lot about her character and, and the person that she was. It really does. And it's unfortunate, just like with, with most things in politics these days, that now we've politicized and, uh, for potential replacement and made it something that's divisive, made it something that will put pit people against each other. And that's, that's the uh, nature nature of our politics these days. Yes. And um, and 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 I think it's why we have so many angry people out there. Uh, I agree. Really angry. Yes. So let me get to Michael Walker. Is Michael in the studio here? Michael, good morning. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Barbara. How are you this morning? Doing well, thank you. Doing very, very well. Michael Walker is from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he is the president of the Walker Agency of Full Service Insurance Brokerage. And Michael, I want to, before I get to what's happening in your world, I want to say that I appreciate last couple of weeks you've brought us uh, really good insurance tips. I think when you look at insurance in the in the world of today, Probably when most families are planning their budgets, uh, insurance, in my opinion, is probably in the top five things that you have to account for and you have to plan for, whether it be health, whether it be property casualty or what have you. So I appreciate the tips that you bring to our audience. So um, let uh, so tell me what's happening in your world, man. Well, one thing that I have to tell you, speaking on the subject of insurance, as you know, that's my specialty. You know, I mentioned this before, Tom, that uh, during this pandemic and COVID, uh, there was some urgency from the standpoint of asking the White House to declare a special enrollment period. And President Trump failed to act on that. I found some information interesting that in August, a consumer finance company, Credit Karma, conducted an analysis of nearly 20 million Americans in the US and found that they have $45 billion in medical debt that's in collections. Wow. That comes to an wow. average of 2,000 debt per member. And basically mm -hmm. it's a result of people losing their jobs during COVID-19. And as a result of losing their jobs, they lost their health insurance because most of America is insured through an employer-based plan. And once they were laid off, furloughed, what have you, insurance stopped. Mm. But the illnesses did not stop. So now there are people that are teetering on bankruptcy because of not having health insurance and having to go and have procedures done. Thank you for that. Well, and, I, and I'm and i not in, in teetering on bankruptcy because of health insurance or what have you, but uh, our insurance is changing again. I'm, I'm in the Screen Actors Guild insurance plan. And um, uh, matter of fact, Michael O'Neill, who was here last week, he and I were uh, talking about it and discussing it. And, you know, you think, you think you've gotten to the point where Okay, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm getting my pension check. I'm getting my, I got my insurance set, so I can, I can ride this thing out and ride, ride on into the sunset. But nope, it's changing again, and um, the cost of medical care is, 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 is I don't, I, I astronomical and sad. Um, what you're charged um, to get two shots in my knee is 2000 and some odd dollars. And if I didn't have insurance, I'd be teetering somewhere. Uh, um, 
as, as I continue to try to keep my health up. Um, so go ahead, Michael, where are you going? Well, you hit on it earlier. It has to be a part of your overall financial plan. Yeah. Because if you do not plan for having insurance and looking at mitigating risk, whether they be known or unknown, it can disrupt your entire financial health plan. Um, Very much so. If you if you got a plan for it, there are a lot of different options out there, and we've also found that most of middle America and middle businesses they depend on their agents to help guide them through the type of plan they need and to make sure that they are protected for any future or unknown risk that may occur. So. If you have a good insurance agent, you need to certainly talk to him right now doing this plan and for what may come about. As you mentioned about RBG's uh, death, uh, the president wants to appoint a new justice before the election. There's gonna be a lot of back and forth on that. Of course, RBG was in favor of the Affordable Care Act and Obamacare. And as we all know, the president has been trying to eradicate Obamacare, which doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever, especially in the midst of a pandemic. Okay, well, let's, speaking of the president, uh, let's just talk a little bit of politics here. And I want to talk about a little bit about uh, the Senate race in this, my home state, the state of Alabama. And um, let me just say that I know both of those gentlemen. I've been knowing Doug Jones for 30 some odd years, probably. Uh, been knowing Coach Tuberville. I, I've only met Coach Tuberville once, and I, I can say that I met him on the practice field. I was out uh, with some guys, and they said we could go out on the practice field and visit, and the coach came over, and, and it spent about 30 minutes talking to me while the team was practicing, and we didn't talk anything about football or practice. We just talked about life in general, and I thought he was a quality guy. But I want to I wanna read a quote to you guys. And uh, Coach Tuberville is favored to beat Doug Jones. But Coach Tuberville spoke at the Birmingham, Alabama Sunrise Rotary Club. And they uh, he was asked what he thought about the Voting Rights Act. And this is what he said. There's a lot of different things you can look at, look at it as, you know, who is it going to help? What direction do we need to go with it? I think it's important that everything we do, we keep secure. We keep an eye on it. It's run by our government and it's run to the to the point that we it's got structure to it. It's like education. I mean, it's got to have structure. Now, for some reason, we look at things to change, to think that we're going to make it better. But we better do a lot of work on it before we make a change. Anybody want to try and translate that for me? Uh, uh, my my translation is Tommy should have stuck to football. <laughs> oh, I I I just I I don't know. I just think I don't know, man. If you don't know uh, about the, the Voting Rights Act, I don't. You you're Tom, talking about being a United States senator. Go ahead, Bob. Tom, as an as an Alabama resident, my entire life, I I'm, I'm really ashamed. <laughs> that uh, the person running for a Senate seat here in the state doesn't really understand the Voting Rights Act. Um, you know, this is the, you know, the South is kind of where all the Voting Rights Acts, the, the work started for all that. And, and it's to think that he does not have the, a, a real understanding of the act is um, it's really embarrassing. Another yeah. bad eye, sore eyesore for the state of Alabama. The, the fact that John Lewis just died, uh, which was who was, which is what the voting right, voting rights act came out of, the fact that these people were walking across that bridge in yes. Selma, and I, I think the thing that one of the things that gets me, and let me just say this for anybody out there who wants to send me some nasty emails or whatever, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm a no party. I vote for who I think is the best person. I don't vote for the person who I think is going to help me make the most money. I vote for the person that I think is going to do the best for the majority of the people in the United States of America. And in this case, it would be in the state of Alabama. 
and to vote for somebody. And I heard somebody say that they couldn't vote for Doug. And I, and I spoke about T Coach Tuberville, and he was a very nice guy when I met him. Doug's a great guy. And, and, and uh, I, I like Doug a lot. Like I said, I've been knowing him a long time. Uh, and I guarantee he knows what the Voting Rights Act's about. But to not vote for somebody because and they have the D behind their name or to vote for somebody because they have the R behind their name really defeats what, what we should be all about. And I'll give you an example. When my wife ran for the city council in our little town and we were out canvassing people and talking to people and we ran across this one woman who said that she said that we asked her who she was going to vote for in the upcoming election. And she said she was going to vote for the person that had the most signs because the one with the most signs was obviously the most popular. And that just let me know how much trouble we were in when we were voting for the person that has the most signs. <laughs> wow. Michael, I think you had to. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to follow that yeah, one, yes, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. I, I almost lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Chime in on uh, <laughs> Tommy T. Um, if there is ever an example of tone death to me, that is an example of tone death. First of all, as you mentioned, Congressman John Lewis just passed away. He is part of Congress. Now you're running for Senate and you're gonna be a part of Congress, okay? By the mere fact that he would have been one of your colleagues, even though he was on the House and you were on the Senate, he passed away recently. And of all the memorial services and all of the programs talking about what John Lewis stood for and his signature program, which was the Voting Rights Act. How could you not just turn on TV and understand what the Voting Rights Act is? You would think. I mean, that that's that escapes me completely. You didn't there's no way that you can be running to be a member of this exclusive club and representing the state of Alabama and not know what the Voting Rights Act is. But but yeah. go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah. I was, go ahead. Yeah, there are going to be people that are going to vote for him. Why? Because he was head coach at Auburn University, my alma mater, and a good football coach. But they're going to vote for him because of that, and because he's a Republican, and he has committed to supporting the current president on everything. Yes. And he's probably got a lot of signs. Yeah, yeah, he probably got a lot of signs. <laughs> probably does. Probably does. Well, but, hopefully Doug has a lot of signs too. So <laughs> but but you wonder why we don't get anything done in Washington. Right. This is an example why. You're right. Because we're gonna send somebody to represent the great state of Alabama in the US Senate that has no idea what the Voting Rights Act means. That's, I agree with you. That's completely yes. agree with you. And 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 I'm sure that there are people out there who will find fault with what you just said, but it's hard to find fault with facts. Right. Uh, you can be and, and 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 you know we have so many angry people out here today, and if this is who you support and you're comfortable with the fact that these facts aren't true, then. What are you angry about? Right. So right. anyway, let, let, let's, and I appreciate you guys' uh, opinions on that. Let's move, let's do one more quick thing, a little football thing before we go to our special guest. And the Big Ten reversed itself on college football this fall. What was that about? Oh, um, money. money. Money and and prestige, you know, they're 
they're saying they got a lot of pressure uh, from a lot of different sources, parents and alumni and football players and, and students and, and even uh, the, the White House um, played a part in, in helping to uh, them to that come to that conclusion that they need to reverse the decision. They're now saying they're gonna play an eight game season uh, so that they have time to, to get in a championship, you know, uh, for their conference. And it's crazy. I mean, when you look at the facts of why they decided to delay or, or cancel the season from the very beginning, that really hasn't changed. As a matter of fact, there's probably more evidence as to why they shouldn't be playing right now. But uh, that's not how they see it. So. And didn't they think they would get comments from parents and 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 sponsors and economic pressure when they made that decision in the beginning? Oh yes. Uh, well, I have a different theory, and I agree with everything that Barbara and Tom you are saying, and it is absolutely about money and the politics. But I think it's something else too. One is Big Ten; they were the first conference to jump out there and say we're canceling the football season mm -hmm. and trying to be the lead dog. Mm -hmm. And they felt like all the other conferences were going to follow their lead. Okay. Pac-10 did, but Pac-10 is kind of joined at the hip with the Big Ten as far as sponsors and everything else. They all are chasing the SEC. Now you call me a few, you want to call me a homer, that's fine. But the SEC waited. Okay. SEC, ACC is a, we're playing. Now that leaves the Big Ten sitting out here by themselves with the Pac-12. The Big 12 joined the SEC and the ACC, said they were going to play. So now they're all chasing SEC, then the ACC, and they want to get to the top. So now with them moving on, you have all these teams that were in the Big Ten that were part of the top 10, top 25, they're going to be dropped out, okay? So that's going to kind of lessen money, prestige, and all of that because these other conferences are going to play, and they'll be playing for the national championship and bringing more money, more prestige to those conferences. And heaven forbid, it would have, it possibly could have turned out being two SEC schools playing for the national championship again, and we did all that. More so likely. That, yes. So now the Big Ten are reversing course and saying, we're going to play. And one of the main reasons that you used medically was that COVID could cause some lingering heart issues. Well, now, for some reason, that's kind of changed. You know, uh, there's testing that can be done to detect that and what have you. There are measures they can put in place to mitigate that. So now Big Ten is playing. Let me ask uh, one 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 quick question before we go to our to our guest and regarding the whole um, football thing. Do you do you think that um, that you do you think do you think that the Pac-10 is going to come in? You think they'll stay out there? They're the West Coast people, so they kind of can do what they want to. They, they're, right. they're probably not going to be in a championship game anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to be cold like that, but uh, you're right. That, that, that's what it is. Uh, so I, I don't know. I just think that um, it's been interesting to, oh yeah, here, here's what I wanted to ask. Do you think out of all this, the players, and I'm talking college, will come away with more for lack of a better term or the, or the right term, will come away with more power? Hmm. That's, That's interesting. an interesting question. It is an interesting question. I'm not sure they're going to really walk away with more power. Um, and, and power may not be the right word, but more say so about what they're having to do. Um, I, that, I think in this instance only, again, I think it's a combination of the, the all the different as we discussed as to why they they are reversing and making these decisions they're making, I don't think it's really the players uh, pushing them as, as forced them to make some changes. I think it's all the it's, it's more coming from an economic basis, um, not from the 
from the players themselves. So I'm not sure the players are going to have more power. I think they probably should. I think some things should change in regards to the players because, again, if it wasn't for the players out on the field, you know, why would we even be discussing any of this? But um, I'm not sure they're driving the decision. Okay, Michael, quickly, and then we need to go. To, okay. We need to go. Okay. My response is that it may not give them more power, but I think it may further this discussion for players to be paid. They can use this as a building block to negotiate compensation for what they do. Okay. And if they're smart, they can do that. Okay, sounds good. Well, let's. Uh, I appreciate that. That was a great, great discussion this morning. Let's uh, let's move on to our sponsorship, and then we'll go to our. The today's show is sponsored by Best Girl Inc. What is Best Girl? Best Girl is a consulting firm that provides customized leadership, access, and inclusion, public relations, communications, and organizational consulting services. Our clients include Fortune 500 companies, utilities, higher education institutions, small businesses, and associations. We have a team of consultants led by Joyce Gilly Gossam and Miss Emily Hedrick. And they partner with business and education and business clients to promote organizational effectiveness and education, motivation, and leadership. Our customized consulting services include strategic planning, corporate communications, executive coaching, fundraising, and some economic development. All right. Thank you. Who's that? Uh, and now let's go to what I call in Hollywood, they have the A-list. You're an A-list star. Well, on Tuesdays with Tom, we've got the G-list. And we have a lady with us today who has it lives at the top of that G-list, Cheryl Jones from Jones & Company. We've been lucky the past two weeks to have two people from the entertainment world. And that's one of the hardest businesses to find success. And when I say to find success, that means you're able to make a living uh, in the entertainment world. Uh, last week, we had Michael O'Neill. Today's guest is the leader and the music director of Jones & Company, a mainstay on the Gulf Coast for 25 years. She is called the Destin Diva or Dr. Diva of the Emerald Coast. Let me introduce my special guest today, the Diva herself. Dr. Cheryl Jones. Hey. <laughs> hey, Cheryl. Good morning. Ning, 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 ning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you going? You're going to perform for us this morning. I understand. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for this invitation. You're you're very welcome. Let's let's hear what you got. Thank you. This special request is for music by Aretha Franklin, "Natural Woman." Looking out across the morning rain I used to feel so uninspired Thinking about all I've had to face Oh Lord, I used to get so tired before the day I met you, life was so unkind, but you're the key to my peace of mind, cause you make me feel, you make me feel, you make me feel like a natural woman. When my soul was in the lost and found, you came along to claim it. When I didn't know what was wrong with me, yes, your kiss helped me to name it. Now I'm no longer doubtful. But what I'm living for, as long as I make you happy, I don't need anything to do more. Cause you make me feel, you make me feel, you make me feel like a natural woman. Oh, yeah. 
yes, what you done to me. Ooh, you make me feel so good inside. And I just wanna be, wanna be close to you. Yeah. You make me feel so alive. Hey, you make me feel, you make me feel, you make me feel like a natural woman. You make me feel, you make me feel, you make me feel like a natural woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. I'm just sitting here grinning. <laughs> Thank so you, Mike. Let me, let me say that uh, Dr. Cheryl is a doctor of education. She has a master's, a bachelor's in jazz studies from uh, Wayne State. Well, her master's and, and bachelor's and doctorate are from the University of West Florida, and she also went to Wayne State. Now, you're from Detroit, right? Woohoo! The, the you, team. I, yes, yes. How did you end up in Destin, Florida? <laughs> from D to the D. Hey. <laughs> from Michigan to Florida. Yes, yes, yes. What what brought you to Florida? We I, I we actually had the long story is I had a distant cousin that lived in Shalimar, Florida came up for a family funeral back in 1982. And she invited us to come down, leave school and come to paradise <laughs> in Shalimar. And uh, so we say, yeah, we're gonna come. And it was beautiful, beautiful here. Uh, we ended up going back to Detroit, but uh, in 1988, we said, well, let's come on back. Let's come on back down ourselves and, and stay on this permanent vacation. Now, here. now, you have been awarded Musician of the Year by Beachcomber Magazine, yeah. Best Vocalist by Beachcomber Magazine. Your band has been honored as the best band by Beachcomber Magazine. And you guys have released, let's see, one, two, three, at <laughs> least four, five, six, seven CDs. Yes, so obviously yes. Things have been going very well for you guys. We're celebrating. I mean, we're celebrating 30 plus years, and that's all due to community support for which we are grateful. And you play regularly at some of the places around town. In addition, you've played the Seabreeze Jazz Festival, the Destin Seafood yes. Festival, Pensacola yes. Jazz Festival. Yes. You've opened for Ben Vereen, Little River Band, yes. Leon Russell, the Commodores, uh, and, and you teach. Yes, yes. How, tell me about that. Do you enjoy it? I love it. I love it. Folks invite me into their homes, into their hearts. And I'm teaching virtually as well, teaching online, uh, especially during these COVID times. And folks still want to keep the music going. So I'm grateful to be a part of that. So, so you 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 work regularly. I mean, you have people. I know people who come down here from Birmingham and other places, and yeah. you're a part of their itinerary. Uh, they I have love to go see you uh, uh, at AJ's on Sunday night. I think you're at Brick and Brack on Friday yeah. night. And, and you do you do a solo thing as well, right? Yes, yes. In fact, just did that at Roots Chris this past Saturday night. It's the Cheryl Jones show doing that. Um, they've kind of waited because of COVID for us being in the courtyard, but they've still had me come in here and there, uh, filling in really for Michael J. Thomas, who's uh, top the Billboard Smooth Jazz charts this year. And uh, so he's keeping busy and I'm grateful to be able to come in and, and try to fill his shoes for just a little bit. So it allows me to express myself on the piano and 
uh, which is my first love. And, uh, and I'm grateful. I mean, folks do come to Destin, to our area from all over. And so Jones & Company, we feel that we're a part of the family from folks from miles around. And so we're grateful they come to visit us. Well, well and, and uh, you just got a high diva from, from, from Joyce. Uh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> so let me let me say, I mean, you guys have been 30 plus years and, and, yeah. and that's a, that's a, I mean, that's quite a record for a band. Um, but you've you've and you've had many of the same people over the years and, and yeah. some of its family. Uh, yeah. You are the, the music director and recognized leader. Uh, you also have your husband is on bass. Yeah. yeah. Uh, your son is on the trombone. He is. Uh, and then oh, Brent Purcell's on drums. Paul Scorto is on yeah. the trumpet. And Ike Bartley uh, yeah. is on the sax. Amazing talents. So, together like that. Did you hear, I, how do you guys keep it together? From oh. I tell you what, it's the music that keeps us together. I'm glad they allow me to be music director and and we all just have the same vision, I believe, for music that it can evolve, it could be fun, just great interaction. And our goal is to try to continue to inspire each other uh, towards the greatness that we we try to endow. In, in I, I, I love it and I'm grateful for this experience. You you bring a lot of joy. I can tell you that. Uh, you guys do jazz, soul, and world music. What what's world we music? Do. We do uh, that incorporates a lot of African influ influenced music, Cuban music, and then some of the instrumentation that we'll utilize. Uh, I'll utilize the the kalimba in some songs and just different unique pieces. It's a good time. It's different to see uh, these different instruments come out. And you got different time signatures that inspires the body to move in all different unique ways. And so world music that it encompasses music from all over our beautiful planet. I'm going to uh, bring Michael and Barbara back on. And I, and I'm sure they have some, they'd like to conversate with you. and and uh, give you their impressions as well. Hey, Barbara. hey. Uh, hi, Cheryl, how are you this morning? Enjoying I life. I am a huge, wonderful, I'm such a huge fan of your, your you and your group. I um, actually got a chance to listen to you live first uh, in Orange Beach, down in Gulf Shores, and then at the Seabreeze Jazz Festival one year. And um, you, you have a huge fan here in Birmingham. One of the questions I have for you is who who was one of your early influences in music? Uh, you, you seem to do a, a, like a, a, a range of music of all kinds and just like to know who influenced you. I would have to say both my mom and my dad, mom, Mary Jackson, my dad, Ben Jackson. They were both musicians, both sang and played music around the house. My dad was percussionist play congas and and he told me that was my first instrument that I was three years old reaching over my head to play the instrument and, right. and in terms of of folks that are out there I love the music of Chick Corea Flora Perim Nancy Wilson Barbara Streisand mm -hmm. uh, the list goes on and on wow great yes. Great. Was, was, was Motown a big influence for you? Was Motown still going strong when you came up? Not really. Okay. I mean, Motown left Detroit in 1972. Okay, okay. Some of their biggest hits happened before then, but I was so young. But my parents, they used to do demos for Motown, do background vocals, hanging out at Hitsville, and and so they knew folks, but then the company moved away. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Michael? 
Yes. Uh, good morning, Dr. Cheryl Jones. Certainly. Good morning. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about the insight of the business of being in the music industry, because I notice in your background, you moved down here to join the group Passage, which. Yes. And tell us a Great little point. bit about that and how you became who you are today, but also the backdrop of the business aspect of it to stay in business and the longevity. Thank you much. I mean, they call it the music business. The first part, you're, you're learning your craft, going to school, learning the history and spending a lot of time getting to know yourself and, and your unique expression with the art form. And then you got to figure out, hmm, how do I fill this refrigerator over here? <laughs> <laughs> and it's a huge question. And the musician will typically have to make a decision on, are you going to roll the dice for national, international fame? Or are you going to find a great place to live in paradise, living your own dream and making the way that you can? Uh, I tried to get out there nationally, sending out packages back in the day when you could. Right now, they don't even accept, record companies don't even accept packages. It's all about who you know. So it's very, very difficult to get the big monies, so to speak, because you can reach a big audience. But now with the internet, my new best friend, <laughs> I can help the business side by um, getting a YouTube channel and getting out there. And there's so many supporters that are out there that can keep the, the business going. It is a cruel business because there's so much rejection. And I say that with respect. I mean, in business, you gotta, well, there's gotta be a meeting of the minds in terms of, yes, I can utilize the music and we both can grow from this. And, but now with COVID, oh my gosh, where national acts are not able to perform and everyone's kind of now in the same place and it's unique. I'm not sure if I've answered your question, but because times are changing so much, but if you want to get into the music business, you do have to address the business side of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You Thank certainly you shared some on it. You guys got, I, I think, um, and I'll just chime in on that. I, I think it is, uh, the, the entertainment business is a very, very tough business. Um, it's, um, you know, they call it show business and, and with the emphasis on the word business. Um, and it's very difficult to get in, like you say, and then how do you stay in? And, and, and really what you come to understand is that no matter what level you're on, if you're an A-lister or a G-lister, you're still just trying to hang on to that, to wherever you are. Uh, you're trying to do those things that will keep you in that particular rung. And a lot of times, and I'm, I'm a big Turner Classic Movies guy, and so when I'm watching a Turner Classic movie, and I'll, I'll always click to see who the actors are. And then while I'm watching it, because of the magic of the internet, I can look the particular actor up um, right there. And Hi. what you generally find, and this is even more so with women, is that there have been a lot of trauma in their lives. There's, you know, you, you, you click on the thing where they married, some of them married seven times. And, and because it's just a very unstable situation. And, and, and most of the time to get there, you have to have a manager who then controls everything. And you just have to hope that you're with somebody who's scrupulous because if you're not, you'll find that, um, You've earned a lot of money, but you don't have any of it. <laughs> you know? um, so it's 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 a it's very very tough business. Barbara, Michael, you you got anything else you'd like to to ask or to comment on? Well, yes. Uh, you mentioned COVID earlier, and just from 
listening about the changes and how COVID is impacting a lot of industries. And I know it's impact the music industry. In your area, because you've carved out a niche for yourself, how about the venues that you performed at on a regular basis there? How has COVID impact that opportunity there? We were, I'd say I lost perhaps 50% of the, the jobs that the weekly book, bookings that I had. But I'm grateful to be at the two places that I'm performing regularly at AJ's Destin and Bric-a-Brac. Uh, AJ's, bless their hearts, they have placed tables on the dance floor. Uh, they've They've got temperature tests with where they put it up to your forehead to try to protect everyone. And as popular as a place as AJ's is, they're really going through um, protocols to make sure that everyone stays safe. Brick a brack as well, where to try to protect everyone is is paramount. That comforts me. I feel safe to go into these venues to perform because it is such a huge risk for us, for everyone. But I like at these venues that everyone, including the patrons and the, the customers, they're trying to protect and, and help each other. Okay. Carol, I'm, I'm looking forward to the day when we're is behind us, and and I'll start really traveling again. And look forward to maybe catching you guys on the, down on the Gulf Coast at some time real soon, and and uh, see you perform live again. Thank, Thank you. you much. Thank you. And I'll 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 have one. I think Cheryl's going to perform for us once more. But I'll have one more thing to say about the entertainment business. Is that I think you have to understand where you are on the pecking order and, and where your satisfaction is, you know, you can do what you do and be playing for 30 years in that band, or you could be in New York scuffling and, uh, you know, trying to play a gig here or sit in on a gig there. And I've always felt it was best to control your own situation. Um, and that's been my philosophy on it. So, um, Okay, well, you're going to do another piece for us, I understand. And, and, yeah. and Liam, you can leave Michael and Barbara up as well. That would be great. Thank you. Okay, well, thank Cheryl, you, you got it. Thank you much. And thank you for, for having uh, Going Coastal as a theme for the show. Oh, I, like I love Going Coastal. It's perfect. It's beautiful. It. When, when, when we were looking for the music, uh, Joyce and Emily and I, I played several clips for them, and I played Going Coastal, and they just immediately said, that's it right there so hard. And, um, a shout out to brent purcell for composing the piece and uh i i want to do this song by i'll call by james moody this is moody's mood i don't know a lot of sing-alongs okay <laughs> i know margaritaville <laughs> and i know moody's mood <laughs> and uh hope you enjoy There I go, there I go, there I go, there I go. Pretty baby, you have that soul that snaps my control. Such a funny thing, but every time I'm near you, I never can behave. You give me that smile and then I'm wrapped up in your magic. Music all around me, crazy music, music that keeps calling me so very close to you. Turns me your slave. Come on, baby, do with me anything that you want to. Anything just to me get next to you. Am I insane or do I really see heaven in your eyes? Shining bright as the stars up above you in the clear blue skies. I can't worry about it. I can't keep my arms about you, baby. Come here, have no fear. Is there another wonder why I'm really feeling in the mood for love? So tell me why do we think about this weather, my dear? 
this little thing might fade away. Here I go, there I go, going out. Come on, here, oh baby, please. Can we bring these two hearts together? That will make me strong and brave. Oh, when we are warm, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. If there's a cloud up above us, go on and let it rain. I feel that our love can survive a hurricane. Ooh, won't you come to me? Won't you release me from this misery? From Baby, you make me feel so good. Won't you take me by the hand? And then we'll go make love in God's promised land. Now this may come as no surprise that I'm in a loving state of mind. Come to me, my melancholy baby. James Moody now, you can blow your horn now. I know you want to. I know you do. Oh, well, I'm through. <laughs> thank, awesome. you, thank you, thank you, thank awesome. you. That is great. That is great. Well, Cheryl, we've been so enjoyed you. You sent me some general truths yesterday, and the one I love is the first one. It says the nicest thing about the future is that it always starts tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> And I will keep that in mind. Anybody got any final comments for Cheryl? And Cheryl, do you have any for us? Oh, bless your heart. Happy fall day, everyone. It's the first day of fall. I actually had my pumpkin spice coffee already. Oh, wonderful. Wow. And uh, just a, a gentle, comforting way towards enjoying life. I hope you all enjoy life. We, I, I, I do, you. and I, I can't speak for the others, but I think that they do as well. Barbara, Absolutely. Michael, any final comments? Uh, Keep doing what you're doing, Cheryl. You, you're phenomenal. I, in, I thoroughly enjoyed the performances this morning and, and the discussion, uh, the insight you've given us. Thank you so much for being on the show today. My pleasure. Dr. Jones, it was a pleasure to have you on the show, and I look forward to getting down and and being able to hear you in person sometime soon. Thank you. How sweet are you? And thank you for encouraging everyone to live the dream. There you go. There you go. Cheryl, thank you so much. It was just absolutely wonderful. We appreciate you. Thank you again for letting me let us use the music going coastal. And uh, you've always been gracious. I use your what's going on in my play, speak of me as I am. And uh I think if you've ever, you, you, you guys have to hear Cheryl do what's going on because it starts out in a totally different vein. And then all of, all of a sudden, she, it goes into kind of, I'm going to say like a jazz type riff of what's going on. And it's just absolutely all. Marvin Gaye would be proud. Oh, wow. <laughs> that means he everything. Would. Thank you. He would. And we just had a comment from Daryl Braden, Big D, who who's, was our first guest. And it's gone, I can't I remember what it says. But anyway, Daryl enjoyed the show as well and enjoyed you. It says, awesome show, always great to start the day with great conversation and amazing music. Wow, thank you. So Cheryl, thank you so much. And um, we appreciate it very, very much. My I, pleasure. I'm going to wrap up with a closing commentary um, uh, from Dr. Martin Luther King. And I think it's sort of fitting in this, in this day and time. It says, the mark of a man's character is not how he acts in times of comfort and convenience, but how he reacts in times of inconvenience and uncertainty. I want to thank you all for being with us this morning. Thank the audience. We appreciate you. We have upcoming guests. From Birmingham, Alabama, San Diego, California, New York, New York, 
a young man named London Carlisle, uh, the Florida Film Commission. And um, uh, I want to thank Michael and Barbara. Thank Dr. Cheryl, the diva. Uh, thank Best Girl. Thank Emily Hedrick, the communicator, our producer. And thank Jones and Company for their music. Next week, we have Mercy Deliverance Ministries founder, Tony Vines, we will discuss the deliverance of health and wellness to not only citizens of Alabama, but to those living in what many call paradise, the state of Hawaii. So we'll see you then. Enjoy yourself. Make every day count. Peace. <laughs>